Hopefulness 2.0, June 10th. It's been a while. I'm tired. And it's a hot one today. Well, at least. Oh, shit. It's been a hot one anyway. It was like 60 something this morning, which isn't hot, but it's hot for a morning in this area. I don't know, string cheese, just straight up eating it like that? What am I, a monster? Yes, of course I am. I realized that, you know, and I think I was in another video too, like, that these aren't actually whole fat. I'm like, well, it's working, so it's whatever. But, as you can tell from the title, I might need to get some food stamps, because I'm just not getting enough hours, and uh, I still haven't paid, I still haven't gone to the store or bought anything, like I'm just slowly whittling away what I have, food-wise. I'm going to go today, though, i got to get at least a little bit of meat, because um, then I can some rice. I don't have a whole lot of uh, rice remaining, but one might say, well, you don't need to eat meat. Meat's expensive. Well, meat's not expensive. Not the meat that I'm getting. Um, and it's good sustenance overall. In fact, it's one of the best, cheapest um, means of uh, getting protein and various amino acids. I mean, if I spend something like, I don't know, 15, 20 dollars on meat, each one of them, you know, each dollar is approximately one serving. And then I can either put it on something or in something else, and you know, with brown rice, brown rice is more filling, more healthy you have the whole germ instead of just uh, the bleached white. Uh, and I'm not going to buy any more protein powder. Because what I'm doing also is eating at work. Um, try to get like um, bagels or toast or add some uh, what was it? Uh, English muffins last night. Since those were available. <clears throat> that way. I'll start washing the dishes too. Um, So that way, you know, work can effectively pay for my food in some way or another. Beyond, you know. But I'm still gonna have to have food, you know, while I'm here. And I need to finish up some of the, uh, like the canned goods and stuff. And I wanna put some bacon in those. Cause at least, at least the bacon ends and pieces that I found uh, is reasonably priced and it'll last me a while. Um, <clears throat> and I'm still making, you know, pizzas, of course. Because, you know, that was my opening shot. Ooh, nice little bubble here at the bottom. I'll show you. Look at that. I mean, it's basically like <clears throat> a high hydration sourdough bread. Um, with oil in it. I forgot to put salt in it uh, when I made it last time. It's unfortunate, but it's whatever. And I can definitely tell that, you know, it's lacking salt, but 
I'm letting it cool off a little bit. <clears throat> and then, um, in a little bit, shortly, I'll wash off that, uh, I'll wash off the remainder of, uh, the stuff in the cast iron, clean that out, heat it up, put on the, um, the layer of oil. <clears throat> I mean, at least I found, like, a nice way to work, um, the cast iron, and, uh, That way it's like, it's not, because like when I first did it, it just, it seemed like it was a bit over the, it seemed like it was just too much for me to handle um, at first. And I wasn't really like, I couldn't figure out the best way to do it. Because I really didn't want to do the whole like, oil it down and heat it up in the oven crap and all that stuff. I didn't want to do all that crap. Um, and so using the sponge, wiping on the oil and everything. Um, it's worked out really well. It's created a nice, non, relatively non-stick surface. I mean, it's not entirely non-stick, but it's, it does the job really well. And, um, you know, all I got to do is, and I mean, you know, some people would say, you shouldn't use soap and water, blah, blah, who cares? You know, just do whatever works. Um, and it works. And it's easy. And that's what I like. Whatever works and is easy. And so I cook whatever I cook in it. And then I wash it. I don't go hard on it or anything. But I do, you know, scrub a bit. And then I dry it off over the stove top. And then once it's dried turn the heat off, and then just rub on a thin layer of oil and let it do its thing. Um, <clears throat> and then cover it up so that, you know, I get a bunch of, like, debris and shit on it. And now it's time to wash it. So I started the online process for food stamps. Because I was like, I'm just not a fuck, doggy. I don't know what she's barking at. She does it every now and then for whatever reason. I don't know if it's a neighbor or a cat or something, who knows. It's not that one cat though. Um the one that I, I dubbed Nigel, um, because uh, I've seen them together at the same time, and she didn't bark at them. So I don't know, hanging out there, so whatever. She gets excited about something. Is this damn thing's heavy because I mean it's it's bigger than a typical skillet because it's a Dutch oven. Um, the other day on Tuesday she was talking about how I need to you know build like a routine and I'm like I don't know how the hell I'm gonna build a fucking routine like I really don't know how I can do it because I, I don't even have anything that is stable enough to build a routine on. Um, I'm sure some people will be like, well, you know, you gotta just build one yourself. I'm like, I, I don't know how to do that. I've never, I've never been able to. You know, 40 fucking years old without having had that ability. And I don't mean like, 
the intellectual elements of how to build a routine. I know those things. It's the actual putting things into practice. And when you're exhausted half the day because you can't sleep, because like, where I'm staying at gets really fucking bright throughout most of the day. Um, it's really hard. So do you know it's really hard to find the be the ability to make a routine. And it was actually easier when I didn't shut the fuck up. <laughs> Train of thought in the process. Thought. And when I didn't have a job, it was actually easier to start building on a routine. Some degree, anyway. Not a great one, but nevertheless. Um, just because, like, my days were normal. They were, and I don't mean normal in the sense of, like, good or whatever. They were normalized. They were relatively similar across each day. Um, so I could plan around that. But now that I have to work, you know, three days a week plus any other days that I might get, um, it's different. And normalization isn't really there because I don't have enough consistency because I mean, I'm still not making enough money. Like, the only reason that I haven't left this place is because I have some money, not a lot, like 700 bucks saved up. And you know, my last check was about $700. About 750. My next check should be pretty good because I worked on Memorial Day, which should, would have been, you know, overtime the whole day. Um, and it was five days in a row, plus whatever other days. So I mean, at least that check's not gonna be terrible. But I mean, there's no guarantee that that's gonna continue. You know, some of the guys, they're, you know, scheduled 40 hours a week. And there's one dude who's like, he literally has the exact same hours and the exact same days every week. Um, he works 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. And I mean, you know, that would be easily sufficient money. <clears throat> I mean, even if I was working four days a week on the regular, that would be enough to pay for my bills, my rent, my phone. Those are the only two bills I have. Uh, I wouldn't have a ton of discretionary money, but I would have some. so hot because I'm not standing in front of the fucking window. I'm going to turn the AC back on. <coughs> Obviously, you know, with the, the stove being on too, it's part of it.
so yeah. Um, and then I've got to get a TB test done off site because I can't do it on site for whatever reason. Um, I guess because doctors only show up so many times a week and it's not when I'm going to be there during the day. And then I got to do two online certifications. Once for CPR, I almost finished that one last night, but I was just so exhausted because I hadn't had any real proper sleep times. Not associated, and that's another thing too. It's like I'll I'll go to sleep, I'll wake up at you know five or six p.m. or whatever, and then I'm so tired I'll go back to sleep again for another eight hours, um, and then it throws my whole schedule out of whack. And it's really hard to have a ritual or a routine when. Most of the time that you're awake is overnight. Um, it's easier if I had like, you know, five days in a row. That wouldn't be too difficult. Because um, then various things, you know, whether it's cleaning or what have you, those things should all be taken care of. Um, You know, things like that could be taken care of on the weekend, whatever the weekend would be, whether it's a, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday type thing, or whatever, um, or a Monday, Tuesday thing, it's whatever, but, oh, shit. I mean, at least I had a bunch of spices, I still do, and I use them pretty frequently, but you know, it's spices, they last a while, for the most part, I mean, you still have to use them, because they can still just kind of like, they don't really go bad in the sense of like rancidity or anything, <clears throat> but more like, um, they just kind of dull, um, that's why like freshly ground cracked pepper is still one of the best things you can put on a food, because it's, I mean, you're holding all the oils and everything in that peppercorn and you're only exposing them to air and, and you know, degradation uh, once you crack the damn thing open. And then, you know, it's like, shake out what you can. Each time you're, you know, you crack what you got, you crack what you want, and then you shake out what you can. I mean, each time, you know, you just minimize the amount of uh, amount of pepper that's just sitting there, and um, yeah, it works out really well. Also, I replugged this thing back in because I've been boiling water, and I was watching uh, technology connections about you know how these things work and why like a cheap one does even better than just boiling water on the stove top. I mean, this thing boils water fast. <clears throat> and I mean, I don't even need it to be plugged in right now, to be honest. It's just another appliance that's just kind of sitting out and trying to figure out the best way to store stuff and whatnot. Um, but... Yeah. So... Get some meat. Um... I mean, I have like, you know, chicken and rice, bacon and rice or whatever, throw some bacon into these beans. Or maybe have some bacon and uh, chicken and beans or whatever. <clears throat> but uh, just kind of, you know, expand on that. And I also figured out that like certain things, especially sort of the larger, bulkier things like flour, sugar, um, I'm going to get those from Smart and Final. So what I can do is, I can, you know, like ride the bus up there, and then, um, cause it's like, it's quite a bit more distance, but then, you know, I won't be in there long, and all I'll be doing is getting stuff that's like, you know, your sort of pantry style essentials, uh, bag of rice, flowers, whatever I need them, etc. Uh, now... 
that's also dependent on certain some certain factors as well because I don't want to just need only one thing from Smart and Final, but because <coughs> I don't want to just you know because I'm not gonna walk the whole way there. That's just too much. That's too long. Um, it's like a mile and a half or more at least. I think it's longer than that, but. But yeah, so, for all intents and purposes, the attempt is, um, or the, the, the idea is, is if, if I need to get any more, like, flour, like, right now, I'm not in a really, I'm not really in a position where I'm going to need too much flour, like, the only thing that I have that is looking low is my all-purpose flour, which I don't really use too much, and when I am like so to kind of balance things a bit because um, I do for this dough it's an 80% hydration um, and so what I what I started doing originally was I would do like 500 grams of water 500 grams of all-purpose flour and then I would throw in another 100 uh, grams each of bread flour and whole wheat flour does it help with you know like various aspects and um, factors of the, you know, flavors and structural aspects of the, of the dough and everything. And then I was like, well, I'm getting, I'm getting low on that. So I could, you know, maybe double or triple those and, you know, alternate with the, the, the all-purpose flour or whatever. And I just happened to forget the salt in this one. So the, the flavor isn't as pronounced, um, but it's definitely different. It's not bad. Um, and I'm doing pretty much equal parts of so like in this next time this next uh batch i would probably do like so i think i've seen it i was like i think i said 80 it's closer to more like 75 percent the total amount of flour that i use is 700 grams so if let's say i wanted to do that again um, I could do either like 250 each of bread and whole wheat and then throw in 200 of the AP flour or I could knock it up even further and go 300 each on those and then do a hundred of the all-purpose flour <clears throat> um, which I'm actually kind of considering doing this time around so and you know my, the Pyrex bowl is nice and clean I need to start ordering some stuff from Amazon, even though I don't really want to order stuff from Amazon. Um, but it would be a good idea to at least get the stuff that I got sitting in my cart. Because um, one of which is uh, some new insoles for my shoes. Because I had to swap over to uh, my dance goes. <clears throat> So I've been wearing the Vessies, good shoes, but I think it's in this one, yeah, but I wore down the insole and that was bugging the fuck out of me. So I've had these for a while, um, but I then switched back over to my dance goes. I don't really like to walk in these too much. I mean, they're still good quality shoes. So there's no... These shoes were like 150 bucks. Actually, these were free. Um, I got them working at the shoe store. Um, I mean, they're nice leather. There's a specific type of leather. I couldn't remember the, nine, the kind. But, I mean, they're nice shoes. They were, I hadn't worn them in a while, though. Um, but they're not really like walking around shoes. I mean, they're not uncomfortable in doing so. But... They're not exactly commuter shoes, if you will. Um, and I prefer to wear those in certain circumstances. Um, and because they are the types of shoes that they are, 
I mean, it's a good thing that I worked at that shoe, that shoe store, even though it was kind of a shitty experience, because I did learn a couple of things. Um, and like those insoles that I use, uh, I got from that store originally, not, not those specific ones. I've already used, I've had to replace the original ones because those were fucking, what is it, 22? It's five years ago. Um, man, the five-year anniversary of me being arrested for a drunken suicidal tweet. It's coming up. But uh, anyway, so I got those shoes because my, uh, my boss didn't want me. She wanted something that looked better, and which was a nice gesture because, I mean, Hundred fifty dollars shoes. <sighs> but and then you know, she was like, "Don't talk about your wages and stuff." And I'm like, "That's not legal." Uh, you know, it's like she was nice to me, but at the same time, like, she had a lot of. She also wasn't nice, if you will. You know, there, there, it seemed like there was this double-sided nature to it. Um, but anyway, so those shoes, prefer to keep them, you know, I'd rather, again, again, I'd rather not commute with them, especially when I'm walking, you know, 10, 10 plus minutes each way and whatnot. And plus, um, they're louder because of the souls that, that are there. Um, in the old building that I work in, you know, the whole place is wood. Like, everything's hardwood. And when I'm walking around at night, especially, you know, in the non-carpeted areas, I mean, like, footsteps just echo. And, you know, I'm trying not to be loud when I'm at work. But... We have like 15 people in the house now. It's crazy. But um, I'm trying to get people's faces and names and stuff. And it's like some dudes are leaving. Like one of them's leaving today. I'm pretty sure you know one or two of them are gonna be leaving again soon because um, they got there right around the time that I got there. And uh, yeah, it's it's a thing, but. Yeah, I need to get those uh, insoles. And I figure I might as well get, because like, with with the knowledge that since I worked, because I even though I worked only one hour on the overnight for Memorial Day, I also worked a full day's worth essentially the night before. Because I worked on the Sunday into Monday, and then working that Monday, um, that Monday night and all that. So knowing that I'm getting that extra, you know, 50% for that day, it's opening up my, my budget a little bit. And I would like to get the new insoles, and I want to get um, the two mixing bowls and the hand blender that I've got in the um, and it all comes out to be about 70 bucks because otherwise it wouldn't have I would have only just done the insoles and I've been I've just been using the dance codes for a while um, ever since I figured it out and I'd like to be able to go back to the Bessies and even the New Balances because uh, like the New Balances they also have removable insoles and they're great for commuting, they're comfortable. I mean, they're old man shoes. I'll show you. I mean, they're not the, the specifically white ones that you see, but they're old man shoes. <laughs> but I mean, there's a reason why too, because like New Balance, and this is something I didn't know when I first had a, new, a pair of New Balance way back in the day, but New Balance has quite possibly the widest range of shoe sizes I've ever seen like not just overall like length size but width size too and 
they have removable insoles so that you can put orthotics in them if you want. And it's like, wow, this is impressive. Um, I mean, it's no wonder you see a lot of older people wearing New Balance. Um, I had no idea really what New Balance was all about until I worked at that store. And of all the shoes that we had, there were two brands that always stuck out. And New Balance always had the most amount of shoes as an option. Um, if somebody was wearing a size 10, we had like five options. You have your like normals and then your narrows and your various wides. And you know, with me, I need a slightly wider shoe because I'm a goddamn bunion. Um, and New Balance does it. The other brand that also had quite a lot of options, similarly, but a different style was SAS. Uh, those are basically your, you know, your comfortable old people, you know, nice shoes. They're not fancy or anything, they're just your nice shoes. Um, and you're probably going to see a lot of older people wearing those, especially in, you know, less casual situations, but, you know, like offices and whatnot. Um, because they offer so many options and they're relatively good budget. I mean, like, I think a pair of New Balance is like 70 bucks, maybe? If that. And I mean, they hold up pretty well, too, so. But anyway, um, I think I've yammered on enough. And I'm gonna throw some oil in that pot. Throw some seasonings in it, throw this dough in it, let it proof up a bit more, get ready for pizza. And then once the sun goes down, I'm gonna go to the store and get some meat. Have fun.